p.m. when I received the news that William Ruto was going to reshuffle or rather had reshuffled his cabinet, that news did not come to me as a shocker. The cabinet of the president of uh, uh, Kenya Kwanza cabinet is, was actually surrounded by controversy ranging from incompetency to unqualified personnel and a number of fellows that were facing criminal and graft charges. And I need to debunk a narrative. The president has successfully and has really triggered some emotions or other celebrations across the country. But I think the celebrations are just too early. The test of what is going to be what is going to be done next is what will show the country that President Ruto is honest to effect changes in government. And we're waiting for what is going to happen next. Stick here. Subscribe to this channel because I have some interesting analysis I am going to do exclusively about that. But on this podcast, the, I want to just narrow down to 10 cabinet secretaries and the moments of the last two years that actually sealed the fate of the cabinet members, of some specific cabinet members. I need to say this. That, and I think I had analyzed that, I had analyzed earlier of about um, the, the narrative of a govern, government of national unity, of a coalition government, and that was, and I said that that one is a strategy that President Ruto is putting so that he can maneuver around a cabinet reshuffle. The nation had reported of downsizing the cabinet members from 22 to 15, but all that could not be affected because there were so many other factors on table. But I think to me, the finance bill protests storming parliament was the climax. But to these 10 cabinet secretaries, their fate had been sealed earlier and the president was just captive of the other factors in Kenya Kwanzaa. But in real sense, these 10, was supposed not even to be in the, in, in, in the cabinet in the first place. I want to start with the health cabinet secretary, Susan Nakumisha. Susan Nakumisha, even from the appointing time during the vetting, there were a lot of doubts on her competence in that docket. And I remember the uh, pro medical professionals, really raised medical practitioners, really raised, raised some pertinent questions on her qualification to lead the docket. Chaos of transition from, and, and how they birthed the transition from national insurance, uh, for, from NHIF to SHIF, has seen a lot of challenges. And it's been postponed thrice. The deductions were supposed to be done in February, it was pushed to July, and now it's been pushed to October. And that transition is now being riddled by corruption. I know you can look at a story, in you can look around, you'll find a story where someone is saying that 368 million was paid from NHIF to unknown fellows due to numerical errors, just, just some errors. And... Um, Really, the country was shocked about this. The 2017 CBA, implementation of the 2017 CBA, also fell in the desk of Nahumisha. And she really fumbled to try to bring to closure, or rather to address the plight of the Kenyan doctors. By all means, I think the arrogance, which is a common denominator that Truto's cabinet had, was really felt here when he was giving this speech in Transoya. Sisi katika serikali ambayo tuko tunafanya kitu kinaitwa one government approach. Haihitaji kindiki kuwa hapa kumtransfer OCS ambayo yuko hapa. Mimi ni wa 
waziri katika serikali ya William Samoe Ruto. Nikisimama hapa ninawakilisha rais wa nchi ya Kenya. Kwa hivyo hiyo maneno ya OCS niko hapa na ninatoa amri. Ninatoa amri. County commandant. County commandant kama yuko hapa na ananisikiza. Na kama hako mahali pengine habari mfikie. Waziri amesema kufikia kesho jioni OCS wa matisi ya kuwa meondoka. Mimi. So in the health docket, you can give Nakumisha out of 10. You can give her four, probably. Not four. Let's give her three. Out of ten. So, that is Susan Nakumisha. The other cabinet secretary, and I've seen uh, her, his clip, uh, really, I've seen some tweets around it, is Moses Kuria. How did Moses Kuria get his way to the cabinet? I, 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 am, I strongly believe that Moses Kuria used Chama Chakazi. You know, in the run-up to last year's general election, he had a splinter. He, he came out of UDA, either it was by design or, or because he was also being strategic, and then formed Chama Chakazi. And Chama Chakazi was a buffer zone that those who would be disgruntled in UDA would probably seek elective seats through Chama Chakazi. But I think at the coalition formation, that Chama Chakazi was absorbed and they managed to get their way with it. So, one of the things that I believe Chama Chakazi was promised, Moses Kuria, is Moses Kuria used that party to negotiate for a cabinet slot. So when he was in Kenya Kwanza, he was in Kenya Kwanza courtesy of that Chama Chakazi. And before he was appointed in the Ministry of Trade and Industrialization, he was told to fold that party. Now, but in that ministry, remember that was his first ministry before he went to this one for public service. He faced counterband sugar scandal. If you remember that scandal, where some sugar that was allegedly fake and was contaminated found its way in the market and there was a push and pull between uh, national uh, the, the ministry and the the, the bureau uh, the, the standard um, um, the, the quality um, quality the quality standards team and that really scandal even dragged some prominent politicians from mount kenya but just as that was going on Government also got into some G2G. And just in the wake of the last financial year, when Azimula Omoja went to the street to protest about the cost of fuel and the cost of energy, Moses Kuria arrogantly came out and told the members of the public that Unaiza enda kwako uchimbe kisima kama unaataka kwamba unaweza pata mafuta. Na watu siku hizi wanaongea mambo ya kuteremusha bei ya gharama ya maisha. Bei ya gharama ya maisha hawezi kuteremushwa kwa maandamano. Hasa naona wengine wana shida kwa Twitter siku kutoka asubuhi mpaka jioni gharama ya maisha sio ni upumbavu. Kushida kwa Twitter kutoka jioni mpaka asubuhi kutoka mpaka jioni itakusaidia na mna gani? Jameni wale vijana tusiingie kwa hiyo right. Kenya haitaendelea kwa kuweka sufuria kwa kichwa. Sasa ukishinda kutoka asubuhi mpaka jioni. Bei ya mafuta imeongezeka, si uchipe kizima yako. Dunia mzima tunajua bei ya crude oil imeenda juu. Na kama wale watu wa makelele wako na kisima, mimi niko tayari kuchipa kesho. Nionyeshe kwa mwa yako, niambie we, chipa mafuta hapa, diyo pei telemuke. Na watu ni wajapu. Ile mambo tunaweza kufanya, hawafanya. Ile kuchisajiri, wapewe, fertilizer, hawafanya. Na hiyo tunaweza, ile hatuwezi, kama mambo ya mafuta, diyo naramika. This statement was really, you know, cast aspersions on 
really whether that was expected of a cabinet secretary. And to that extent, I know William Ruto would have wanted, th this one ought to have gone even before this Gen Z. In fact, the, the, the numbers, the, the cabinet members I'm going to share with you here, and you are also at liberty to add into this list, they have been sanitized by this all, by, 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 by the sacking of all. Because in the first place, they ought to have gone even before. So from that point, Moses Kuria even was attacking nation media, was attacking the journalists, and people saw, oh, that is not supposed to be in the caliber of a cabinet secretary. Number three, Kip Chumba Onesmas Murkomen. By the way, uh, there is a video clip in Spice FM, Murkomen saying that um, he cannot resign. There were, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but of course, I don't know why he was saying that because according to information that we've been told is that the cabinet was sacked. They didn't know. You know, you know that came from somewhere. The president just made the announcement, announcement from State House and they were not aware, even though we are yet to confirm. I think we will really follow up this from tomorrow just to confirm whether there is truth into what is going on. Now, Murkomen has had many challenges in Kenya Kwanzaa. And has been in the spotlight so for according to me not one of the best not one of the good reasons i remember even during the gen z protests amongst the cabinet members that were earmarked by the members of the public for opulence was murkomen and if you want to know and i think him on on his side it borders integrity but it's not about incompetence on murkomen it's about his integrity and because he has dented integrity that has already compromised him in that ministry during the u.s trip the bahati member of parliament told the nation that u.s declined that more should not tag along president ruto that was one now just for the first i think for the uh, second part since that was since um, since September 2023, there are very suspicious blackouts in JKA and the state of JKA. So Moses Kuria, uh, or rather not Moses Kuria, Kipchumba Murkomen found himself in a situation of just making committees one after the other to fix the mess at JKA. And many people argued that uh, something was amiss. Murkomen would then come out instead of carrying the blame to blame the previous administration for having done that and the country was saying you're blaming uhuru kenyatta for the mess at the airport but why is it that it was not even leaking the roof why is it that the roof the roof was not even leaking during uhuru kenyatta's time even though even during uhuru kenyatta's time the uh, rainfall was being felt there, there were rainfall and chirar gay you, you know by then let me tell you if there is a minister that have had high end uh, Remember when Murkomen, some envoy came from U.S. and declined to meet him when he was in the Ministry of Trade, amongst the reasons he had to be moved. Um, Cherenge said that uh, made this statement about Murkomen bordering some corruption. And I still have many doors here to show when the CS visited. That one is too hot, eh? Can, can we... Sure. The, 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 he visited the China Uyi. In China, he has visited China severally. And you heard at the floor of the house defending Chinese contractors. Where will the hustler contractors who voted for us go if you are giving them contract? Because he received a bribe, and I am daring him to come clean on the allegation of receiving a hundred million US dollars from China when he visited in the month of between June and, and October. I want him to come out and tell the country. Because every time when he came to insult me in the funeral, he defended the Chinese contract. Who will defend Kenyans who are contractors? Or does it mean Kenyans, we don't have capacity of doing roads? Even slashing and, and clocking drainages, do we need Chinese to come and slash? Where will our young people who do not have jobs go? So I want to dare him to tell the country what agreement did they agree on allegations of receiving 100 million US dollars from China, where he was paid an afro of 50 million US dollars. And we have all the facts. We have the flight manifest. We know where the money is in Dubai. It is that some of us are just keeping what we call decency, but it has reached a time that the country must know the truth. 
And that is why he decided to ensure he gets protection from the house so that some of us do not speak and tell the country the truth. So no questions, I will rest at that. Uh, I will keep you in touch. I'll just give you the one of KQ so that you can get a... Uh, uh, you can get just, you can share because I have a copy so that you get that specification of that air aircraft. And I know media have been very critical to him going around the world. He has been trying to mobilize resources and ensure those resources are, are brought to the country. My only problem has been cabinet secretaries who sleep on the job. Because the president has gone out, uh, talked to the IMF, talked to everybody to get resources. So this year they should work. Some of them, instead of working, they go on a shopping spree. They wear 130,000. It's called Salvatore Cabarmaco. They wear expensive watches. They wear a lot of things instead of concentrating on the core business. And that is our concern. And you know, as the oversight, we have also to assist. And you heard what I said in Bomet before the president. Finally, the president is keen on ensuring equitable development across the country. But the Sakiswaili word say, Kila Mwambangoma uvuta kwake. Since I'm elected by the people of Nandi, I am there to always ask, just like any elected leader, to say, where is the share of Nandi? Other people from Mandela will do so. I cannot answer for the other regions. I can only answer for Nandi because there are many projects. Of course, the issue of subsidized fertilizer, we thank the president. That one has been done. Yesterday, we commissioned dryers of maize. It has been done. The price of maize is doing very well. Coffee and sugar reforms are ongoing. The issue of milk prices is being addressed. So this issue of roads, this issue of roads, because C.S. Linturi brought to us dyers to Mosori at NCPB yesterday. This issue of roads is because somebody incompetent is busy demeaning some of us and insulting. And you know, my brother Murkomen is busy insulting people in funerals than fixing roads. And that is why I was assisting him, telling him, get back to road. You know, they say when you miss the road, get back to road. And I want to say without fear of contradiction, personally, Sinunu Iwoga, because Beya Iwoga Ilishuka, Ata Waginipea Free, Suwe Sinunua. So I know truth will always stand with me. The people like Jean Maria Serone, the people who stood with the right are still remembered because they stood with the people. I want to assure my people of Nandi and the great people of Kenya, we shall continue speaking the truth and doing our oversight work, work without fear of anybody, including 10% from Chinese. You don't go and eat 10% of Chinese and come and form it out our legs. We'll call you out when time comes. So that's also in it. The third, not the third, the fourth cabinet secretary. And I believe it's really ought to have been or sent packing is Keturi Kindike. I know that Keturi Kindike has accolades of the only cabinet secretary that does not travel, I think since Ruto's cabinet was picked, he's never gone out of the country. Yes, by the way, he's never gone. Him and Machogu, they've never gone out of the country. But I fault Kindiki on two grounds. The moment William Ruto named him in charge of interior, the, long, the legal fraternity and professionals were very happy. That a ministry that was, that had for long had been seen as a bulldozer or, you know, a force, a ministry that had been seen as the, the black face of government, had gotten a lawyer. So it would align itself with the constitution and adhere with the law of the land. But there is something in that ministry. Even despite of them getting a lawyer there, there have been outright disobedience of court orders and outright violation of human rights i am when it comes to humanity i think there I'm, I'm very unapologetic last year 75 kenyans were killed anti-government protest this year 40 has been killed anti-government protest all of this kindiki has promised action against perpetrators and security forces that are responsible for that and nothing has been done of course there are look at the banditry in the north the banditry in the north we really i think for 2024 it has, it has gone down but for to, to i think in 2024 they try to probably it has gone down or it is us 
or it is the media which is not highlighting or amplifying because you know sometimes the media sets the agenda. So the Gen Zs, there are so other, many other things happening but the Gen Zs have actually uh, uh, consumed the airspace. So I think on that ground, he's failed to take, really follow the law in the docket. Another one, the fifth one is Mithika Linturi. I still don't understand how President Ruto supported and defended Mithika Linturi when farmers confessed to journalists live on camera that they paid money to collect fertilizers and they ended up with some annual annual wastes that were put in form of stones. And that is a flagship project of Kenya Kwanzaa. Remember Kenya Kwanzaa have had a mantra. They, they have had an economic, I don't want to say it's a slogan. I think, let me call it a slogan. I don't think it's even a strategy. That, okay, it's a strategy slogan maybe. That we are not going to subsidize consumption, we are going to subsidize production. And what they did is to go and subsidize the cost of uh, fertilizer, even though much of that fertilizer was donated to us in the first phase. And the president even had a very good opportunity to send Linturi home when Jack Wanami, the Mumula member of parliament, even petitioned parliament to impeach the CS only for Kenya Kwanzaa to come in the 11th hour and salvage or rather save the CS who had received condemnation across the country and across the political divide. Both Kenya Kwanzaa MPs and Azimio MPs were of the opinion that probably he was supposed to be the first cabinet secretary to be impeached. But of course, a political career was on the lifeline. So if he was to be impeached, maybe he was not going to vie anytime soon and the president had to do the things around it. So we take fault on that. There are also other discussions about coffee. And I want to attack that with um, Chelugwe. Chelugwe is in terms of is in charge of cooperatives and societies, and that's where Hustler Fund falls. Hustler Fund was also another flagship project of Kenya Kwanzaa. And despite being a pet project of Kenya Kwanzaa because they campaigned on it, it has been riddled by corruption. That some people are given money beyond the limit. There are people that have been given double, some some are just fake IDs double entry of ideas, and there are so many other, the audit queries on Hustler Fund has exposed how the money has gotten its way from the intended purpose to people's pocket. I want to look at um, Muturi. You know, Muturi is supposed to be the attorney general. And I remember last year, during the State of the Nation address, uh, after president addressed the parliament, I think, yeah, after president, president addressed parliament, that was last year, probably, I think it was in, um, in September or October there. Then he was asked about the president's speech and there was, um, there was a gazette notice to hike, I don't know, the fee on birth certificates and then, and, and, and marriage certificates. And he said, he also saw the gazette notice in, uh, he just met the gazette notice and was not consulted. And Kenya Kwanzaa have rolled out some of the most unpopular, either unpopular or policies outside the legal framework. And they found themselves in court fighting to implement any single project just, just because of legal hurdles. And we've been arguing that probably they are not, president is not a consulting legal team or we have a weak team. But one thing, and I think the standard ran a newspaper, a, a headline today, and saying that uh, um, Muturi was saying that um, he's never consulted on a number of issues that Kenya Kwanzaa is doing, and that is why there is a bit of a joke. And remember the time when even the son, the son to Attorney General, kidnapped in the city at night. Who, is, who else is safe? So the point of breakdown between Kenya Kwanzaa, William Ruto, and just within the Kenya Kwanzaa, there are many other angles in it. And, and I remember, just in December, there was an amendment that was taken to parliament by Kim, uh, uh, Kimani Chungwa that was demanding uh, where they wanted the, um, uh, the, the confirmment of senior, senior counsel that responsibility to be, to be bestowed in the office of attorney general on also 
attorney general to be given autonomy to pick his staff and appoint solicitor general. And that was not declined. So there, there was a point of departure between Muturi and William Ruto. I can tell you, Muturi and William Ruto, that relationship was based on I want perception of politics. Not that there was nothing, there was, there was much. Muturi had been speaker for 10 years under courtesy of Uhuru Kenyatta and Uhuru Kenyatta's friend. They worked under Uhuru Kenyatta Foundation. And so he was just there because there was no means out. The other person is Alice Wahome. From the Ministry of Water, which was his first, her first ministry, she had a fight with P.S. Rono, who was a, the P.S. then. And P.S. Rono was moved, moved to agriculture as Waziri was moved to lands. So what happened there is there are some projects that had earmarked for Mount Kenya that were moved for Lower Eastern under the Athi River Water Authority, something. And there was a point of departure. Then when she went to the Ministry of Lands, then demolitions were experienced. And these demolitions were under the guise of receiving or rather scooping public land. So she was implementing some cabinet policies that really also made government unpopular. Lastly, I think Aisha Jumwa, the, the, the case on the house and Machogu failure to really fully uh, implement CBC. The capitation criteria for the university, university funding model and Eduafia and the other issues in the Ministry of Education were also really concerns that I believe if Ruto meant Machogu ought not to have been there. You can add into this list. But for me, I picked those 10 because I see something very interesting about those cabinet members. Thank you.